colleagues. We will now begin the interactive dialogue with the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Cambodia. The list of speakers will close in 15 minutes. I now give the floor to Mr. Vitit Muntabahon to present his reports. Sir, you have the floor. Good evening. Bon après-midi, Sir Sadai. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during the past year, constructive actions in regard to Cambodia's link with human rights can be identified, and they include more attention to child protection, introduction of social protection measures, such as pensions for employees, expanded help for the poor and vulnerable, and improvements of the justice system to clear case backlogs and to introduce non-judicial disputes resolution. Notably, it was reported very recently that the authorities have spent over $1 billion in the past three years helping needy groups in the country. During this period, various economic, social, cultural issues also arose at times with implications for lawmaking, enforcement and anti-crime measures. There were multiple cases of human trafficking of a modernistic kind, especially online fraud or scam. Many nationals from other countries have been tricked to come to Cambodia and prey on other people online. At times, they are subjected to violence if they fail to defraud other people as demanded by the traffickers. Today, there is more cooperation among law enforcers and other personnel to tackle these cases. Yet, these people who are tricked into preying on other people should be seen as victims and should not be criminalized as illegal immigrants in the destination country or illegal emigrants in the country of origin. They need transparent assessment of their status as well as supports with empathy for the recovery and return. On another front, various incidents during the year raise concerns in regard to inter-country adoptions and surrogacy with needed measures from the authorities to prevent the sale and exploitation of children. Turning now to progressive assessment of the human rights situation in the country, there were innovative benchmark indicators in my 2022 report, as well as the current report, which have provided an opportunity to take stock of the realities. Since the peace process of the early 1990s, Cambodia has progressed on several fronts, as seen by the assessment per the 20 benchmarks in my recent report. It has great potential economically, and I welcome the increased attention for environmental protection and climate change as part of green development. However, those progressive developments tend to be in the economic, social, cultural field rather than in the political arena. A large number of the benchmarks, more than half of the 20 benchmarks, in regard to the latter, as analyzed in my 2023 report, are regrettably unfulfilled. This is especially due to the monopolization of power at the top, fencing in the political and civic space as a systemic restrictive enclosure. There is now a power shift from the older generation, who were there for some three decades and more, to their children and kith and kin, personifying dynastic transfer of position and power through instrumentalization via the recent constrained elections. In essence, this scenario jeopardizes respect for human rights, democratic principles, and the international rule of law. My 2023 report provides details of the 2022 commune elections, which were won by the ruling party, the Cambodian People's Party, while the main opposition party, the Candlelight Party, and other parties made some headway. This was despite the fact that the electoral machinery was very much weighted in favor of the former. The political situation was already conditioned by the monopolization of power at the top of the system. Since then, the political panorama has undergone a disconcerting contraction, as evidenced by the following anomalies. First, the landscape towards the 2023 national elections was undermined by a clampdown on the political opposition. Before the national elections, the registration of the Candlelight Party was turned down by the authorities under questionable circumstances 
thus excluding the main opposition party from participation in the elections. Second, prior to the elections, those in power amended the electoral law to prohibit incitement affecting the electoral process. This added another unnecessary layer to the already overused criminal law provisions on incitement, which had been employed extensively to stifle those disagreeing with the power base. This new law impeded the political campaign of various political parties seeking pluralization of the polity and steps towards a liberal democracy. Thus, key rights, third, the key rights holders and stakeholders such as opposition leaders and civil society actors were arrested, prosecuted and detained at times with verbal and or physical attacks against them, some before, some during and some after the national elections, thus being prevented from taking part in the national elections and their aftermath, which have turned out to be exclusive rather than inclusive by nature. Fourth, those in charge of organizing the elections were and are known to have close ties with the ruling elite, thus epitomizing imbalances contrary to fair play. They are part of the collegial stratum undergirding the power base, the latter having under its wings all the pillars of the state, executive, legislative, and judicial. Fifth, the main political party which had already been in power for a long time won again in this the July of 2023 for lack of a viable opposition. It won 120 out of 125 seats in the National Assembly. This was almost a deja vu of the previous 2018 national elections when the ruling party won all 125 seats. The latter was especially due to the fact that the main opposition party at the time, the Cambodian National Rescue Party, had been disbarred, dissolved by judicial intervention in 2017, also under dubious circumstances. Hence the perpetuation of political monopoly or quasi-monopoly, not plurality. In truth, the 2023 national elections were neither free nor fair, despite having many election observers at the field level. There remains an issue of whether those observers were independent from those in power. Wisdom dictates that we should look at not only election day, but also what preceded it, as well as what succeeded it. It invites systemic, qualitative, rather than cosmetic, quantitative taxonomy of the electoral spectrum. Today, in interfacing with the new government, the world community should invite it to seize the opportunity to turn the tide and rectify the discrepancies of the recent past. At the end of my 2023 report, there is from this mandate the intergenerational call to all, the intergenerational call to all, urging the authorities to offer that rectification and abide by the basics of human rights as well as key recommendations for improvements. At a time when the path of the country's development is being reshaped by a new generation, it is pivotal to integrate the call for human rights and democracy substantively into the trajectory towards the future. Notably, the country is now embarking on its pentagonal strategy as its new development path to elevate the country to middle income and ultimately developed country status. That pentagonal strategy focuses on economic growth, job creation, equity, efficiency, and sustainability over the next 25 years. I thus call upon the authorities to please integrate into its strategy and related implementation this pentagonal commitment to human rights. This pentagonal commitment to human rights, please, with five key components incumbent on the authorities to offer responsive actions. One, please fulfill the 20 benchmarks, such as by suspending and reforming negative laws, policies and practices already voiced by this mandate in the 2023 report to enable the country to comply with the full range of human rights interwoven with democratization and as guided by the Cambodian National Human Rights Action agenda which this UN Special Rapporteur issued at the end of his visit to Cambodia in 2022. Two, 
Please ensure justice, access to justice for all, such as to release expeditiously the range of persons detained for political reasons and detained human rights defenders. Please drop the charges against them and please revoke their sentences. Three, please open up the space for political pluralization and inclusivity, such as for political actors, civil society organizations, activists and media, working especially on human rights, democracy and environmental protection as human rights defenders. And please demonopolize the power base to share power in a democratized, liberalized setting. Fourth, please revamp the numerous state-related institutions, especially the body in charge of organizing elections and the judiciary, to become genuine checks and balances with a sense of justice and political cum societal equilibrium. And five, finally, please cooperate with your system, including this mandate, to enable genuine implementation of the Paris Peace Accords, human rights treaties, other international obligations, and related national laws, policies, and practices, enhancing the incontrovertible nexus between peace, human rights, democracy, and sustainable development. Thank you, Okun. Thank you. According to our practice, we will start by hearing the delegation of the country concerned. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cambodia. You have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. White President. My delegation appreciates the affinities of the Special Rapporteur and his recognition, though every narrow scope of Cambodia again, including access to education, resource allocation, social protection measures, and climate change mitigation. However, despite our clear vocation and the government opens and genuine dialogue, we regret that the report and benchmark do not set record state on many fronts due to incomplete, unbalanced integration of factual and legal account of various body of the state provided. Such a practice is simply deviated from the well-established principle of the code of conduct and manual oper operation of the special procedure mandate holder, resulting in earnest grading and unfair assessment on civil and political front. The benchmark does not reflect our unfolds efforts and progress made on the ground on wide-ranking areas, including the re reinstatement of political rights of the opposition, legal and judicial reform, and crackdown of human trafficking, just to name a few. Mr. White President, democracies and human rights are not about sprints and perfection, but rather as marathons and progress. To fierce and a moderate observer, Cambodia would have been assessed as a half full glass, as we will hear from overwhelming majorities of delegation to our national efforts and progress, as well as encouragement for constituent forward. Cambodia's attached importance to her liberal democratic past, thus, multi party elections are regularly held in the kingdom in the run-ups to the communal and parliamentary elections in 2022 and 20, 2023, service and political space have been broadened. Among the convicts who have engaged in anti-integrating national insurgencies, over hundreds of them have the political activity ban reading with. They have formed and joined different political parties to compete in the recent election. Around 30 convicts were pardoned and have the political right reinstated. Remarkably, recent general elections were recorded with voter turnout of 84.59% to choose one of the 18 contested political parties and their future leader, whom they believe can continue leading the nation on the path of his stability, social, economic development. The electoral process was also closely monitored by nearly 10,000 of national and international independent observers who widely assessed on the election a free, fierce, and peaceful. The power transfers also follow strictly a reckless democratic process at the parties, electoral and parliamentary level. Indeed, the absence of two political parties from the electoral process due to the non-compliance with the law does not negate the liberal, pluralist and democratic natures of the kingdom. To maintain a vibrant and constructive environment for all political parties that aspires to participate with newly established government by providing advice and consultation, the Supreme Consultative Council has officially reinstated. Certain political parties have applied for membership of the Council. 
service and the core space are also indisputably free and open, attest by the constructive vibrant roles of over 6,000 NGOs and robust presence of nearly 2,000 digital and traditional media outlets operating without censorship. Furthermore, the government remains committed to holding biannual partnership dialogue with NGOs to further address the concern, including ongoing amendment of the law on associations and NGOs. Mr. President, you, Mr. Vice President, judicial independence is well currented by our constitution. There is no shortage of instances that ruling party supporters and a member have been punished by the same courts. Purports independent status or affiliation with a political party, trade union or organization does not do not entitle a person to break the law with impunity. In any case, human, human rights are not absolute. But special rapporteurs and human rights advocates have never stressed that the exercise of rights and freedoms carry with special duty, responsibilities, and limitations provided by law. To qualify law enforcement, a restriction out of freedom of certain group is to denigrate the rule of law and its qualifications to all citizens. Exercise special rapporteurs should have done more to address the challenges of hate speech, xenophobia, disinformation, and provocation to citizens under the guise of exercise of the rights and freedom. To conclude, as a country, ratify almost all core international human rights instruments. Cambodia remains steadfast in promoting and protecting human rights under the Constitution and within the rule of law, and in pursue our irreversible democratic journey with pluralism. I thank you. Thank you. I now invite, oh, this, the list of speakers is closed. I now invite interested delegations to ask questions to the Special Rapporteur and to make commit comments on this report. The speaking time is one minute, 30 seconds for all speakers. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic on behalf of ASEAN. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President, Vice President. I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of ASEAN and Timor-Leste. We commend Cambodia for positive and constructive engagement with the human rights mechanism. We reiterate that the working methods of the SR should be balanced and constructive, taking into account the perspective of the government and national circumstances. We appreciate Cambodia for the successful holding of the 2023 general elections with a turnout of over 84% and closely monitored by thousands of observers who widely assessed the elections as free, fair, credible, and just. While acknowledging the challenges we recognize, Cambodia's initiatives, efforts, and remarkable advancement in promoting human rights, including through diverse social assistance schemes, enabling people with disabilities to access social welfare, and realizing 72.5% of Cambodia's SDGs indicators. We further note the vibrancy and the large number of media outlets, CSOs, and trade unions in Cambodia. To conclude, we underscore the role of the Council in delivering through constructive dialogue and cooperation concrete and meaningful human rights impact on the ground. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Special Rapporteur, thank you for your work and for presenting the report. The EU appreciates Cambodia's cooperation with the human rights mechanisms. The role of the Special Rapporteur remains vital in monitoring the situation on the ground. The EU is concerned by the human rights situation in Cambodia, including reports of continuous intimidations, attacks, unjustified arrests, and prosecutions of human rights defenders, journalists and media personnel, political dissidents, trade unionists, and others seen as opponents to the authorities. The arbitrary revocation of the media license of the voice of democracy exemplifies the increasing constraints on independent media. The EU condemns the human rights violations and severe restrictions of the civic and political space perpetrated in the country in the context of the July 2023 general elections. 
we deplore the government's disqualification of the main opposition party, the Candlelight Party, and the sentencing of the leading opposition figure, Kem Sokat, to 27 years of prison, including a ban on the exercise of his political rights. We call on the government of Cambodia to respect, protect, and fulfill all human rights and fundamental freedoms without discrimination. We are ready to work with the new government in Cambodia in advancing human rights and democratic standards. Mr. Special Rapporteur, how could we encourage Cambodia to advance the implementation of the 20 benchmarks identified in your previous report? I thank you. President and UNICEF welcomes the report of the Special Rapporteur and this interactive dialogue. Cambodia has made remarkable progress over the past two decades, culminating in its, in its attainment of lower middle income status in 2015, which has helped to improve the lives of countless families and children. However, UNICEF remains seriously concerned by the persistently high rates of violent discipline that continue to occur in all settings. Also, children in conflict with the law too often have their rights violated because of the inadequate application of the 2016 Juvenile Justice Law, and the number of cases of human trafficking, including children, are equally alarming. Additionally, recent steps taken by the Royal Government of Cambodia to resume inter-country adoption raise concerns about the protection of children without parental care. With the weak social welfare systems and safeguards, inter-country adoption exposes children to violence and exploitation, including being trafficked and sold. UNICEF analogizes the authorities' efforts in drafting the child protection law, which represents a significant milestone in addressing the last recommendations of the Committee on the Right of the Child. Among others, this law aims to prohibit corporal punishment in all settings, making Cambodia the first country in the ASEAN to do so. UNICEF urges the government of Cambodia to enact this legislation as soon as possible and to invest adequate financial and human resources towards its implementation nationwide. We stand ready to support. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Egypt. Thank you very much, President. We welcome the efforts made by the government of Cambodia to promote human rights and cooperate with the mechanisms of the Council. We encourage the government to continue on this path of progress. I would like to stress the importance of providing technical assistance to the country in order to provide support in the efforts to promote human rights. We reiterate the importance of technical cooperation and capacity building because this is the best possible way to strengthen capacities of countries and strengthen their efforts in order to promote political, economic, social, and cultural rights, including the right to development. All of this should be done in response to the request made by countries on the basis of national priorities. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Switzerland. Monsieur le Vice Vice President, Switzerland thanks the Special Rapporteur for this timely report. Indeed, recent events in Cambodia have been dominated by worrisome developments which took place in the context of the July general election and the subsequent formation of a government. A year ago, the international community expressed a hope, the hope that political pluralism would succeed. Sadly, that hope has been dashed. Exclusion from the elections of the main opposition party, media restrictions and embargoes, harassment of those who are presumed to oppose the ruling elite, those things have marked the electoral campaign. Together with the outcome of the elections, this indicates that civil and political space is shrinking fast in Cambodia. Switzerland deeply regrets that the elections were held in that way and that the people of Cambodia have not been able to participate fully in all aspects of the electoral process. Nonetheless, we commend the interaction between Cambodia and the UN human rights system, in particular interaction with the Special Rapporteur, as well as with the Committee on the Rights of the Child and the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. We call upon the government of Cambodia to accept the 20 benchmark indicators and to implement them. Special Rapporteur, could you give us more detail as to the specific nature of the attacks on, as well as arrests and prosecution of, those who are assumed to be opponents to the ruling elite, as well as human rights defenders in the Cambodian context? Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Luxembourg. 
Merci, monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President of Luxembourg. Alliance uh, itself fully with the statement made by the European Union. We thank the Special Operator for the report. We praise the cooperation of the Kingdom of Cambodia, the Special Operator, and other mechanisms of the UN Human Rights Council. Efforts realized in the level of certain social economic rights are encouraging. However, the road to progress can be long and full of obstacles. An open society, independent justice, and the freedom of opinion and expression is fertile ground for the full realization of human rights. We urge the authorities of Cambodia to use the opportunity that is represented by a new generation and put an end to reprisals aimed at silencing political opposition. The incarceration of dissidents should be stopped, and we call for the unconditional release of all political prisoners. Mr. Special Rapporteur, your progressive program of action of 10 points in the promotion of human rights in Cambodia is an excellent roadmap to realize tangible progress. We encourage strongly the Cambodian authorities to try to reverse the current negative trends. Can international partners of Cambodia do more in order to ensure progress in the realization of certain economic and social rights together with a free civic space and independent judiciary? Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of France. Thank you, Vice President. Special Rapporteur, France reaffirms its wholehearted support for your mandate, and we thank you for your report. We note the recommendations that you have made, and we call upon the authorities in Cambodia to implement them. Since the last report in 2022, Cambodia has undertaken significant efforts in terms of the social sphere, also education, and efforts to combat climate change, and we commend those efforts. However, France remains deeply concerned by attacks on political pluralism in the country. We deplore the sentencing of Mr. Kemsoka to 27 years in prison. He was a human rights defender and a political opponent of the government. This is part of restrictions on public freedoms, including restrictions on the media and members of civil society that we have observed recently. We deplore attacks on human rights defenders and we call for all of them to be released and also for all political parties to be allowed to participate fully in the political life of the country. We call upon the Cambodian authorities to recognize the Paris Agreement of 1991 and to give full effect to all of its provisions in order to restore democracy in the country. When it comes to penitentiary systems in the country, again, we need greater protection to be afforded to minorities especially women and girls, and we would encourage the government to do more to establish a National Commission for Human Rights in accordance with the Paris principles on the institutions that should exist in all countries to promote and protect human rights. Lastly, we encourage the government to continue to cooperate with the Special Rapporteur and the UN High Commission. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, and thank you, Mr. Special Rapporteur, for your presentation today. The July 23rd Cambodian national elections were neither free nor fair. Ahead of the elections, Cambodian authorities engaged in a pattern of threats and harassment against the political opposition, media, and civil society that undermined the spirit of the country's constitution and Cambodia's international obligations. This includes the conviction and 27-year sentence of respected Cambodian political leader Kem Soka. These actions denied the Cambodian people a choice in determining the future of their country. In response, the United States has taken steps to impose visa restrictions on individuals who undermined multi-party democracy in Cambodia. We call on the Cambodian government to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms, release all those unjustly detained, and reopen civic and political space. We also urge the international community to join our hashtag without just cause campaign in calling for Kem Soka's immediate and unconditional release. We are encouraged that Cambodia has engaged with the Special Rapporteur and in negotiations over the resolution that contains his mandate and encourage Cambodia to take full advantage of the Special Rapporteur's expertise to improve its human rights situation. Mr. Special Rapporteur, what specific actions can the international community take to address the deteriorating human rights situation in Cambodia and restore genuine multi-party democracy? I thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belgium. <clears throat> Mr. Vice President, 
Belgium aligns itself with the EU statements and thanks the Special Rapporteur for his report. My country appreciates Cambodia's engagement with UN human rights experts and treaty bodies, as well as the increased social and educational expenditure, which overturned the decline in public expenses of recent years. Belgium hopes Cambodia will continue to engage constructively with the Special Rapporteur, including by allowing country visits. However, my country remains concerned about the restricted political and democratic space in Cambodia and deplores the laws and policies used to hamper the registration and participation of opposition political parties and candidates in recent elections. The shrinking democratic space has a clear negative impact on the right of Cambodians to participate fully and equally in all aspects of the electoral process and public affairs. Moreover, my country deplores the continued attacks, unjustified arrests and prosecutions of human rights defenders, journalists, media, personal, political dissident, trade unions and others who are seen as opponents of the authorities. Belgium calls on the government of Cambodia to immediately release all detained human rights defenders and political dissidents. Mr. Munterborn. Could you elaborate on which steps should be taken by the Cambodian government to ensure the immediate and sustainable restoration of political pluralism in the country? I thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Thailand. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thailand aligns itself with the ASEAN statement and takes note of the special rapporteur's report. We welcome Cambodia's engagement with human rights mechanisms, such as the OHCHR's field office, the special rapporteur, and particularly the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights during its reporting, as well as the independent expert on protection against violence and discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity invited by the government of Cambodia for a country visit earlier this year. Thailand commends Cambodia's continued efforts in strengthening social protection and promoting economic recovery post-COVID-19 pandemic, with particular attention given to the vulnerable groups. Thailand also welcomes Cambodia's decision to increase budgetary support to improve access to and the resumption of education for children. As fellow ASEAN member state, Thailand stands ready to work closely with Cambodia to address any challenge and to further promote and protect all human rights. I thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of China. Vice President, in recent years, Cambodia positively promotes its nation building, maintains political stability and economic development. Progress has been made in poverty reduction, social protection, education, health care, environmental protection and other aspects. People's living standard has been improved, with all human rights well protected. China welcomes and recognizes Cambodia's efforts in the promotion and protection of human rights. China categorically opposes some countries' act of using human rights as a pretext to intervene into sovereign countries' internal affairs and violate the legitimate rights and interests of the Cambodians, and sincerely hopes that all parties will observe the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, respect to Cambodia's sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity, respect the development paths chosen by the Cambodians, and do more contributions to the stability and development in Cambodia and the peace and prosperity in the region. Thank you, Vice President. Vice President, we wish to commend all of the success that has been made in Cambodia in terms of education and guaranteeing the rights of indigenous persons and religious freedoms. We hope that the new cabinet of ministers uh, formed in August this year will continue to pay due attention to the protection and promotion of human rights and guarantee scrupulous respect for international obligations. We call upon the country and international human rights mechanisms, including the special rapporteur, 
to craft constructive interaction with Cambodia with an emphasis on supporting efforts to improve the situation with human rights within the country while guaranteeing respect for the state's interests and for national specificities. It is our premise that it is the Cambodian authorities that bear primary responsibility for protecting human rights within the country. As for in the international community, it should focus in this area on technical cooperation and capacity building. And of course, everything should be on with the agreement of the authorities of the country concerned. Thank you. Thank you. This was the last speaker we could accommodate for this meeting. Excellences, distinguished colleagues, this brings us to the end of this meeting. We will reconvene at 10 a.m. tomorrow to continue the interactive dialogue with the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Cambodia. We will then hold the interactive dialogue with the independent expert on the situation of human rights in Somalia followed by the interactive dialogue with the independent expert on the situation of human rights in the Central African Republic. I hereby close the 42nd meeting of the 54th session of the Human Rights Council, and we thank our interpreters for their support always. You have a wonderful evening. <laughs>